<laughs> cool. Oh, here we have a, a, a bravely and, and brazenly metaphysical, multi-layered mm -hmm. heist movie set in, 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 in our dreams. And, and it's one of those sort of movies whereby I think that, you know, it, it's, if you get it right, you've got The Matrix. If you don't get it right, you've got a Matrix sequel. And I don't know whether for you, whether it was a moment you thought, this is working, because it's, it's so many layers upon layers upon layers. Well, it's not often that the Hollywood studio system finances a film like this. It's, it's existential in a lot of ways. It, it, it delves into the subconscious of the human mind, and, and it's also, you know, has everything that Hollywood uh, can, can give to a, the mainstream audience simultaneously. So it was, I think it was very brave of uh, the studio to actually finance something like this, but it's a testament to Chris Nolan's imagination and, and his track record with pulling off multi-dimensional narratives like this and being able to convey them to an audience that is extremely emotionally accessible and um, takes them to different, you know, areas of the imagination. Beautiful young Chris, he said that when he was six he first started to contemplate the idea of lucid dreams and it took him ten years to kind of kick this script around in his head to get it right and when Warner gave him the go-ahead he took another six months but he said he sat down with you for a few months and discussed it, which he'd done a few times before on other projects that never quite worked out. I don't know what clinched it for you here because I would imagine you really have to believe in it before you'd say we're definitely going to do this, it's a big, big commitment. Well yeah, I mean it was a very ambitious idea of his to, to do this movie and a lot of times I think with visionary directors and Chris is absolutely one of those you have to sort of unlock the Rubik's Cube of what they were trying to convey on screen because these things are so entrapped in their mind that even a screenplay can't sort of convey what what the film ultimately was like so for me being able to sit down with him three months and sort of hash through this cathartic journey that he wanted to go the character to go on and really create with me this, this notion of a man almost going through a therapy session of four different stages of the human subconscious and the closer he, the deeper he gets throughout the film, the closer he comes to terms with his own nightmares and the truth about his past and what he's sort of been suppressing. So I looked at it almost like the, we, we made the analogy even though it doesn't like to talk about it a lot on, <laughs> on the press tour, but this was a drug addict. This was a guy addicted to the dream state, a man that was escaping reality at all costs. and. This is a journey for him to come to terms with the truth of that. Of course, it's the second time this year you, you, you've played in a, a, a large, a big budget movie, a, a, a troubled widower who's, who's having dark visions and reality is mm -hmm. distorted. And, and I don't know whether you're sleeping all right, whether your head's in a good place right now, because it, there was a lot of uh, deep kind of psychological kind of traumas you've had to go through on screen. Well, that's where I live them out, on screen, because the truth is I'm sleeping great. Everything's fine. I'm a very... <laughs> I couldn't be more excited about this movie, and I couldn't be more excited about being able to do what I do, and I'm taking a little time off now after two very intense movies. And, um, you know, this is, where, this, this is where I get my my demons come out on film, so it's been all right. Two very quick ones. You're, 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 um your, your late grandmother had always said, you know, take that time out and do the bricklayer thing and all that. And I don't know whether, when I last spoke to you, I, I suggested that Ireland needs bricklayers. I don't mm -hmm. know whether you'd, uh, you, you've any kind of intention of heading back over, because I know you've been before, but I don't know if you've... I went, I went one day, one day, t and, and I, 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 I sat down in a pub all day long and talked about a movie, and I never got to see the city, so I really regret uh, not going back to Dublin. I want to see, I want to see everything that Ireland has to offer. A lot of my friends are going to go soon, so... Hopefully, I'll make it there. And the very last thing is, given the, 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 the wonderful career you've had, and you had that almost like a speed bump with Titanic, where you had to take two years out to get that kind of craze to dies down, all those screaming teens to sort of give you a chance to act again. I don't know if you have any advice for Robert Pattinson in the same kind of respect, because he's kind of dealing with that, where he's, I think he wants to be a good actor and he wants to make good movies, but he's in a position now where, quite, quite happily, he's making you know, these Twilight movies that are hugely popular, but I think it makes uh, it hard for him to move on as an actor, too. I think I don't have any advice for him other than continue to, to, to work as hard as you possibly can when you get the opportunities to do, to do other films, and he's got plenty of those opportunities. And he's going to use that to propel himself and to do more, more and more work, but when you, when, you get that, when you get those chances, you know, when you're, when you're a working actor that gets to choose their own material, you've already hit the lottery. So that, now it's time to maintain that. That's it. You know, you work as hard as you possibly can on every opportunity you do get. But he knows that. I have no advice to give him. I'm sure he knows that. Rock and roll. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you. Thank you.